Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play of a game made by GSP and a company that I'd never heard of until I encountered this game. We'll let their logo appear from all of the green blocks of justice. <coughs> to create the game company logo for Frogwares Game Development Studio. It also uses Bink Video, by the way. <coughs> this game is Journey to the Center of the Earth, a game made in 2003 by Frogware. This game, I imagine, and I have read the back of the box, so I do believe it is, is loosely based on the story of the same name, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I'm not going to spoil what that story actually is, because it's a very good book, and you should probably read it. So, what is this kind of game? Well, with a name like Journey to the Center of the Earth, it's a point-and-click adventure game. Point-and-click adventure game that uses 2D backdrops with 3D characters and, um polygonal sprites for objects. I've gone into the options and set them up like this. The 1024 by 768 and 32-bit color depth is actually the maximum and the default. The brightness is also on default as well. The effects and volumes I have lowered purely so that we can have the speech higher because at some points the game is very loud. Subtitles however were on by default. Now I've tested this game a little just to check the sound, and to uh, make sure the game records. That's why there'll be a few saves of one particular scene. And the introductory cutscene takes place when you press Start New Game over here. It's not exactly a super intuitive and informative uh, menu screen, but it's quite nice. Also, no title screen, which is a little curious. And um, it's a very jarring cut from the introductory cutscene to the main game. So, I hope you guys have watched the first video, otherwise what's happening might not make a huge amount of sense. Let's go, people! Start a new game by pulling the lever of game starting. On the throne with a giant letter I on it. This is the introductory cutscene, and here's your jarring cut. My god, I hope the pilot isn't hurt. I hope the pilot isn't hurt too. But unfortunately, considering I've seen the introductory cutscene, I think the pilot is either very dead, or never existed. So, this is our character. I believe our character is called Ariane. She is a photojournalist, and she was on her way to Sneffels Volcano in Iceland. She went out to take some, take some pictures, and some very convenient and small rocks made an exceptionally localized landslide avalanche of rocks that crushed only parts of the helicopter. So, here she is. The only item we have by pressing the right mouse button is our camera. We could use it. It is sacred and also looks very old. Now, an interesting thing this game does have that a lot of point-and-click adventure games don't is if I left-click here, she will walk. But if I double left-click here, she briskly jogs, which is awesome. But I am automatically sort of getting uh, the vibe that this is a very uncaring protagonist because, my god, I hope the pilot isn't hurt, isn't the sort of tone I'd be using if my only escape off a volcano in Iceland has been crushed by rocks and someone has potentially died. But let's just walk very casually over to this helicopter and see if he is in fact dead. I didn't see him escape. <laughs> The only thing we can grab here is this door, it would seem. If we can't go in that way, there are rocks in there. The helicopter door is closed. It is closed. Why don't you open it? The helicopter door is closed. Of course you can't. It's probably jammed shut or locked from the inside. Does make sense if you wouldn't want the door flinging open as you're across the Icelandic Sea. Anything else I can grab? Well, that is either a rock or the helicopter blade. I hope it's the rock. No, it is in fact the helicopter blade, which we have magically stored in our back pocket. Look, there it is! Helicopter blade! Hmm. I think you have back pockets, Ariane, that, um... Even an epic level wizard would be extremely envious of, with extra-dimensional spaces that bend the laws of space and time. But that's enough for that. Being the only item we have, let's see if we can use that to open the helicopter door. Yes, it will fall off unceremoniously, 
And we still have the helicopter blade. There's clearly more work for it to do. In here is... Well, an extremely obvious item right there. So let's grab it. And a suitcase. Which is actually a laptop, I think. Yes. Yes, it is. A knife. Some rope. We can't take the binoculars. Those would be too useful. We can't take the book. We can't take that... We can't take that for some reason, or that. Well, the first thing we'll do is boot up the computer and play some Peggle. Or I could load up an icon in the... in that corner. Ah, it is my computer. It doesn't tell me how much battery it has. Probably unlimited. No mail, no photos, no nothing. Right. What can we do? We can open the bag. In here is a pair of warm gloves, a screwdriver, a lighter, a flask... A flask? You had a flask in that? And it's empty? Fair enough. Right, okay, let's think. Look like some sort of wiring, and I doubt the electricity is actually on right now. <laughs> Excellent. We've stolen some electrical wire for no other reason than it's a point-and-click adventure game and we need everything that isn't nailed down and even the things that are nailed down. So, we could wear the gloves. I think I'll wear the gloves. Why not? On a whim, I thought that might work. What's in here? In here is a flask of cleaning solution, adhesive plaster, bandage, and a tube of pills. Excellent! But no pilot. I think the pilot is either dead or has disintegrated. Well, I don't think this accident is going to be the scoop of my life. On the contrary, it might in fact be pretty important news, considering the fact that you're a journalist. Journalist crashes on Icelandic volcano. Probably a good piece of news. Let's explore to the left. I should tell my office about the accident. How are you going to tell your office about the accident? What are you going to do? Throw a rock all the way back to your office with a note saying SOS stuck on Sneffels Volcano? A message in a bottle? A pigeon? Your computer? Your computer. SOS. This is an urgent SOS. I am stranded on Sneffels Volcano in Iceland. Our helicopter has been severely damaged by rockfall. It's been destroyed by rockfall, pretty much. It's not been damaged. I am fine, but my pilot is missing. I'm going to try and find help. Ariane. Let's see if we have a good 3G signal on an Icelandic volcano. An instantaneous one! Lovely! Help is clearly on the way, so there is nothing that we should do now at all to endanger ourselves. We don't need to go find help. This volcano is pretty distinctive, after all. We can just wait. And when they see the bright red helicopter, you can get rescued. What's over here? Oh, you can jog if you like. Nothing. Looks like it's slipping. It's like what slipping? What the helicopter or the ice? Hmm. Fair enough. No problem there. Let's head back over here. Now, gaming logic tells me that there is an extremely obvious open cave here that I'm going to look in. So I'm going to see if I can get in here. There might be a way out over there. There might be. Now, I think there's a rock in the way. And if memory serves, tying a rope will probably not help because I could just move it myself that way, I imagine. There might be a way out over there. Okay, this is a point-and-click adventure game that doesn't give me any prompt as to what I'm doing wrong, just that I'm doing it wrong. Electrical wire's not gonna help. Neither's a knife. Or the flask. Don't tell me I have to use the helicopter blade again. No, I have to use the helicopter blade again. Although, unfortunately, that was too much for the helicopter blade, and it has now shattered irreparably. Let's go! It's so dark in here. Okay, that is an obvious puzzle. Let's light the lighter. That we are, by the way, still keeping in our extra-dimensional back pocket. And is now... emitting flame. Let's use this to get through. What's the worst that could happen? You're gonna fall, aren't you? 
That was too obvious. So, you finally woke up. Hello. Uh, hi. Hello. My name is Adam Covalier. Greetings, Mr. Extremely Weird Man with a monocle and a short hat and a magic wand by the looks of it. You're either the most amazing person alive or the strangest. <laughs> By the way, if I'd fallen in a volcano and appeared here suddenly, I'd be a little more shocked than, uh, hi. I'd probably be like, where am I? What on earth is going on? Why do you look like the magical hobo wizard? I don't even know what a magical hobo wizard is, but I suppose we should ask what this place is. You're here, after all, and you're probably not the pilot. Especially considering you introduced yourself. But where am I? I was on the volcano. I took a fall. This place looks so different. It is. Welcome. You are beneath Snaefell Volcano. Okay. You are one of the privileged few of your race to gain entry to this secret beach. Right. I don't understand. What's this place called? The First Camp. Yeah. That is a very obvious reference to the Journey to the Center of the Earth story. But we are apparently beneath Snaefell's Volcano. You know, with its beach. And it's Sky. I would be freaking out a lot more about this. Either we've traveled through space and time, or he's lying. And if I were a photojournalist, I'd be going with the lying angle. My name is Ariane. I'm a photojournalist for Horizons Magazine. Never heard of I it. I had an accident. Is there a place around here where I can phone for help? Doubtful. Not that I know of, except Askiam. You see, I've been holding up in seclusion for years now. Really? So I don't quite know what to tell you. You live on this beach? No, I was looking for something here. Actually, I need help too. You seem to know this place a lot better than I do. I don't know how I, a person who's fallen through a volcano, and magically survived, by the way, even if I fell on sand, or in that very shallow water to the right, I'd still be very, very dead at this point. Have you seen my pilot by any chance? No, I haven't run into anyone else. Well, at least he didn't ask what a pilot was. So they probably have pilots in this magical world beneath the volcano. So tell me about this Askiam place. Askiam, is that the closest town? As a matter of fact, it's the only town. Only? The only one? Yes, it's where the men of the first camp regrouped. I was born there. But now I prefer my solitude. Fair enough. Now, that's probably going to ask where Askiam is. It does sound like a good place to start my search, though. How do I get to Askiam? You've got to go through the old mine. Really? Really? There's no side path? Like, oh, just turn a right and travel a few miles? No, the only route to Askiam is the old abandoned mine, and then the volcano of doom and the jungle of despair. You guys are terrible at directions. Don't tell me you're lost, too. Well, not the same way you okay. are. Okay. I need to replace the crystal at the tip of this wand. It is a wand. But I'm too old to hunt this sort of treasure. <laughs> you find it and bring it to Why? me. Why? But I have other things to do. I have to get out of here as fast as possible. Believe me, I'll make it worth your while. Really? Find the crystal, and I'll help you out. How on earth are you going to make it worth a while? Unless you can teleport me back to the surface. All right, it's a deal. Where do I find this crystal? In the cave by the camp. You have to polish it like the one on my wand. Really? And where shall we meet? You're headed for the city, right? So we'll meet on the way there. Okay. Well, goodbye. I must leave you now, Ariane. I'll be expecting you to show up with the new polished crystal. Okay, Adam. Mm -hmm. What an oddball. I'd better have a good look around. This sure is a strange place. Pivot on the surface and walk away, Adam. Well... Time certainly were hard for the Realms of the Haunting character after he went insane. There are many questions that Ariane should be asking right now. Why didn't Adam just go across the beach a little to this first camp and go get the crystal himself? Why is there a beach under a volcano? 
Why is there sky under a volcano? How did I not die from the fall? Where's the pilot? Was there even a pilot? Have I in fact gone completely and totally insane, and all of this is just hallucinations as Ariane dies? But none of these questions have been asked. The only thing she has to comment is that Adam is a bit of an oddball. And she has extra dimensional pockets. <laughs> so, when we come back, folks, we will explore the beach of the first camp. And once we've done that, we'll probably go and try and find Adam. Through the old mine of doom. I'll catch you later. See you then. Later.